Hello and welcome to the Wristwatch Obsession channel. I'm your host Edgar and today I have the pleasure of doing a review of one of my favorite watches from the very first time I saw it in a, an authorized dealer's um, case on the Tissot case. And this one just jumped out at me, the polished version of their expert series of T-Touch watches. They have a whole different line of T-Race and so forth that uses their um, touch screen technology. They were the first to put a tactile or touch screen on a wristwatch back in 1999. But uh, Tissot's no newcomer to innovation in wristwatches since they've been doing that since 1853. But this is just a gorgeous watch. It's, as you can see, it has a very racing inspired motif or design cues from those beautiful um, italicized Arabic numerals that seem to be floating on the dial above that carbon fiber background. In addition to the tool watch looking aspect with the cardinal points of the compass on the bezel. And that's one of the things that immediately struck me was the extremely fine printing of the degrees. Let's see if we can get it to show up. It's difficult under these bright, these are kind of bright, harsh lights today I have. I'm not using natural light. It's a little more glary than it normally would be. And the scratches are showing up. This is a well-used watch. I've been wearing it now for six months. I wanted to really use it before I did a review. But let's see if we can see that there it goes. We got the degrees there, um, which is a, a really cool touch. The fine font and everything makes it look uh, very elegant and very tool watchy, which I like. I have a background in uh, electronics. I've been doing aerospace. Uh, I did the same thing in the Air Force, always with instrument panels. Uh, uh, and I was a TV repairman, so I had tons of gauges and um, other instruments. And so I'm an instrument guy, so uh, I, I have a strong emotional attachment to any kind of watch that has uh, gauges, whether it's uh, battery level or complications. Uh, I like simple watches as well, but give me a really cool aeronautical or all-purpose watch like this one and I'm there. Uh, this one comes like in four different colors right now uh, in production by Tissot. This is their polished version of the, um, the Expert. And this one has a carbon fiber dial, as I mentioned, with the red motif there on the right. Nice, cool splash of red. It also comes in an orange version where the indices are in orange. There's no numbers, if I remember right. And it has an orange strap. It's really nice looking. Um, there's an all black version. Anyway, take a look on the web and you'll find the different versions. This is all titanium. So 40% lighter than steel. Uh, normally for this size of watch, which is uh, just over 43 millimeter in diameter. Um, but for this size watch, if this was steel, you're looking at around six ounces. Uh, maybe a little more for my seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, where this one here weighs 4.1 ounces. Very light 4.1 for an all metal watch. This is all titanium, including the um, really very nice bracelet. This is an excellent bracelet. It's very comfortable. As you can see, it articulates very well. It's not a hair puller. It has a security milled safety clasp here with a double button. You got to push both buttons before that opens. And these scratches you see here, you tell I took this on every adventure I could. And that's one of the things that Tiso mentions on their website is that uh, this is a go anywhere watch, whether you're in a plane or a boat, on land, uh, whether you're at the concert or um, hiking through the woods or the mountains. This is gonna be a very useful watch for you. And that's um, one of its high points here is the functionality and form. So let's, uh, let's get the dimensions out of the way and we'll talk more about uh, why I like this watch so much. All right, so it has a diameter, as I mentioned, of uh, just over 43 millimeters. It's uh, just over 14 millimeters, about, uh, the references say that it's a 14.8, uh, something like that, Four, yeah, it's nowhere near that, it's just over 14. So it's a little thick, but, uh, but it's not top heavy because it's, uh, the weight is counterbalanced by the bracelet. 
Uh, if this was on a very light strap, it might feel a little top heavy, but not like a steel one would. Um, the lug to lug uh, in millimeters is 52. So it's a little bit large that way as well, compared to maybe a 48 that people are used to on a smaller watch, maybe a 42 diver or something like that, 42 diameter diver. So it is 52 millimeters um, on the wingspan that they would call it from here to here. The lug to lug distance for the strap is a unusual 21. We all hate when they do that, but there are straps available for 21. But I'll get into why you might not want to be um, changing straps that often. You might see the holes in the lugs here and think, oh, good, we have an easy to remove spring bars. And that's not the case here. I'll get to that in a minute um, and why that's not the case. There's a good reason for the difficult strap changes. So we'll get into that. Um, so I mentioned it's 41, uh, I mean 4.1 ounces for my seven half inch wrist with a couple links removed. Um, that is around 115 grams. So not a heavy watch at all. Just a really uh, wearable watch. It's comfortable all the way around. I could wear this all day. Sometimes I'm figured I'm wearing it just because it is so well balanced. You have a, a smooth flat back. Uh, so there's no big hump or anything to raise it off your wrist and make it even more top heavy. It's very flat fitting, very comfortable. And as you can see, there are little holes there. That's because the sensor is under that cover and that cover is held on by uh, four screws. I don't know if those are titanium or not. They're probably stainless steel. Uh, but the buttons are titanium, the case, the watch uh, bracelet. There you can see the milled here you can see the milled clasp. And on the back, on the back it says, before I forget, let's look at that. So it's T-Touch and that's their touchscreen technology. And here we see it says uh, TSO 1853, Sapphire Crystal on top. ATM 100 meters, water resistance. Pretty typical for a high-end chronograph. If you look at regular chronograph, you get 100 meter water resistance, you're doing pretty well. It also says titanium and reference, the reference number and so forth. And that is a T-Touch. This uses a regular CR2032 battery. So if you're handy with a miniature screwdriver and watch out for that gas, so you could do it yourself. Otherwise bring it to an, um, a watchmaker or someone that could uh, change the battery and then do the water testing if you plan on going uh, swimming with it or something like that. I don't see myself swim swimming in this watch. I have a lot of divers and there's no need for that. But if I fell into a pool or something or had to wade across the swamp, you know, as you do, <laughs> um, this would, this could handle that. You, you just don't want to go water skiing or something where you have high pressure water hitting those buttons or something because almost any watch with 100 meters won't be able to handle that. <clears throat> See if there's anything else I missed on the dimensions or anything. Let's see, 43, uh, 21 millimeter lugs. Yeah, the 21 millimeter strap lugs is kind of a disappointment that it's not 22 or something more common. Uh, but if you like this bracelet and that's what you're gonna keep on it, it's not a non-issue. And there are still plenty of straps, just not as many as if it was 20 or 22 on that unusual 21. Uh, let's see, anything else here? All right, let's get into the features. So this is a so-called ABC watch or altimeter, barometer, and compass, but it also has the normal digital watch features uh, like dual alarms. It has a, another time zone. It has a chronograph or a stopwatch, and it has a countdown timer. This one also has temperature. Uh, so this one's good to go for camping, hiking, any kind of outdoor activities. Um, this is gonna give you a lot of information um, along with that barometer. We'll get to those in a second. This has an ETA 48.311 uh, Swiss movement in it that allows all the functionality. And there is so much into that module to make this thing very ergonomic or easy to use rather on the features. Everything's implemented very well. So the big deal about this watch, not only does it have a touch screen, but when you're wearing it, everything is uh, easy to get to. Unlike a lot of watches like my favorite uh, Citizens and G-Shocks, which I like a lot. Um, on the G-Shock, as you know, you could push the four buttons, but sometimes they're hard to push and recess. And you got to reach around to this one, for instance. 
um, to use the functions. A couple of button pushes, not too bad. Not as bad as the Citizen, where most of those you have to pull a crown out different positions, and then you have to turn it as well for the different features. But this one, you don't have to do anything like that, and you'll see in a second. Um, but on those watches, they're very difficult to use when you're wearing the watch. You often have to take it off. Um, but let me just show you what the features and how easy this watch is to use right now. Um, before I forget, let's do a wristwatch check. Today I am wearing, because I'm, I'm in the honeymoon phase and I'm wearing this every day. I wear all my watches um, almost every day since I work from home. I switch out watches a lot. So I've been wearing this watch almost every day for the past three, four months. Um, because I'm reviewing it. I'm in the process of reviewing it. But I'm also uh, reviewing this one as well. So part of the day I also wear this one. This one I've been wearing almost every day for the past month and a half. I'm getting ready to do a review on this next or very soon in the queue. This is the G-Shock GST B200. And this one is also very easy to use. The buttons have a little guard, but unlike other G-Shocks, um, the large round ones that I find, that I have a couple, I have three, but I don't wear them a lot because even though I have a large seven and a half inch wrist, those are just so large, they, they don't go under a sleeve like this one does very easily here. Um, they get caught on door jams all the time. I can't put my hands in my pocket, so I don't wear them a lot. I wear um, square G-Shocks that are much flatter. And then this one too is not too thick and it's not too big. We'll get into this one next time, but it's just uh, so easy to use. And that's an STN screen, so that's seen from all different angles. I love that watch. Anyway, that's enough about this one. Let's get on with the one we are talking about. So I'm going to put this on my wrist right now, give a wrist shot, because sometimes I I, thought, I forgot to do that one time. Very disturbing. <laughs> so here we go. Very easy to put on. Look at that. Just boom. Very easy to put on, take off, and very positive on that. I have sort of a flat wrist, so it's very wide. It's actually around 58 to 60 millimeters across, so I can wear large watches. This is on the large side with that 52 millimeter wingspan, but as you can see, um, it just looks gorgeous on my wrist. I just love it. The uh, very, very legible. That's one of the things that I require in a watch. Almost any watch that I have that I wear a lot is going to be easy to read, not too heavy, and comfortable on the wrist. Um, if it's not easy to read and comfortable, I'm just not going to wear the watch. So through the years, and I've had Rolexes and Breitlings and 15 Omegas, and I've had all sorts of Swiss watches. And the ones that ended up always in my safe, I ended up selling unless I had an emotional attachment or as a gift or something. Um, then I, I end up rating my safe when I want another watch I'm looking to get because you can't we can't afford to get all of these and I'm not subsidized in any way so I have to buy my own watches and the ones that survive through time are the ones that are my favorites and I end up wearing them all the time and this is one of those watches I don't see myself ever get getting rid of it um, so that's what it looks like on my rather large wrist and you can decide for yourself on what would be too large for you or not. Um, but as far as functionality and, and what it is, I would say get the watch if you if you like it. Let me show you how easy it is to use. So the claim for the fame is the touchscreen. But the other thing that people, I think, don't realize how easy to use is that the hands move and rather fast compared to Citizen or something on those ones that don't have an LCD screen. All right, so let's get right to it. So all you do to activate the T-Touch on this watch, some is it a momentary push on the center pusher. This is not a crown, this is a pusher. And mainly what it does, it acts like a select button on a smartphone or something. Um, so all you do is just push it and hold it for one second. You hear a beep and you get that little T-Touch symbol blinking. And that means the screen is activated and it has six sections here at the 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And it is marked for what they do right there. We have medio for meteorological. We have altimeter. Over here at the four, we have the uh, chronograph. And then we have compass at the six, the alarm at the eight or dual alarm. And then we have the temperature at the 10. The blinking stop because after um, 30 seconds, it, it disables itself to save the battery. So let's push that again, we'll get it going. And all you do is we'll hit the compass. Now, how cool is that? Uh, the long one right here is pointing to north. As I move my wrist, you can see it's moving around. And then we have a unidirectional bezel. Now, this bezel looks fixed like a lot of these compass watches are. you got a fixed bezel. Um, and this one, 
is the tolerances are so tight that it looks like it's part of the dial. Now, you can see that the, um, the compass to save battery went back to the local time. Oh, it hasn't yet, it's still moving around. There you go. So after um, so many seconds, I think it's 30 seconds on this one, different functions um, go back to the time after 15 or 30 seconds, depending on which one. I believe the altimeter and the compass go back in 15 seconds and then uh, the chronograph and the others go back to 30. But when you do that, um, on all the other functions, not the compass because it uses up too much battery power, um, but on, all, on the other functions, um, like the chronograph for instance, let's do that right now. If you go to the chronograph for instance, one thing the hands do is they immediately get out of the way. So it goes to where the compass is, but it never encroaches on here. So this way you could always see what's going on. Then all you do is just hit the, um, the chronograph, the normal chronograph button like any other watch, the chronograph's going. And then after uh, 15 or 30 seconds, um, it's going to go back to the regular time, but it's still going to be counting down and you can actually see it on the screen. So in this watch, you can have the, the there you go. So the time is always available. And in this watch, you have the chronograph going at the same time. You can just leave it like that um, for however many, I know it's over 24 hours. This is a long time chronograph. It's not a one hour chronograph like a lot of watches. This is going to go on for a long time. As you can see, it's a hundredth of a second chronograph. As you, as you can see, we have, um, oh, I actually did the lap uh, timer one. So we want to stop it like any other chronograph. And then this is for a reset. So 43.85 seconds. As you can see, the seconds are going to go over to minutes and hours. And it goes for a long, very long time. Really nice chronograph. But the point being is that you could always do uh, multiple functions. So you could leave that chronograph running. Turn on the T-touch. And that's still running and then you can do something else like go to the meteorological now the meteorological one it has a barometer and right now it is in um, relative barometric pressure if you touch it again right there relative and then go here and it's going to be an a for absolute pressure if you hit the altimeter we have number of feet now, a lot of people get confused, I think, on the altimeter um, because they think it's always going to be the correct feet where you are, which isn't the case. You have to calibrate it because it's based on barometric pressure. If the bar barometric pressure, like a low pressure front's coming in or the pressure is constantly changing um, throughout time, whether it's days, weeks, or hours. So if it's changing fast, then you're going to start to get inaccuracy. So right now, I know where I live right now. I, I'm at 165 feet right here at my workshop. So 165 feet, it says 223. That means we're a little bit lower pressure than last time I said it because it thinks we're higher up where the air is thinner. So all you do is just hold, uh, hold this down. And then you would use these to lower. If you hold it down, it's so smart that after a while, it's going to go really fast, as you can tell. Then it's going to jump 50 feet at a time. I'm going to do this on purpose just to show you how fast it goes. So now we're going to go back up. We're going to set it for 165. Oh, see, it's, it's jumping 25 feet at that point. Very nice. Then you hit the center one to set it, and you're done. So now it's calibrated. So when I go out right now and I take a walk up and down the hills and dales or going in the airplane or whatever I'm going to do, um, it's going to measure the feet accurately. Hit the center button, and it, and it goes back to where I have it, the month, the date, and the year. This one does not have day of the week, but it has the date and so forth. <clears throat> At the time we got the temperature and we have 74.8 degrees. The longer I wear this, it's gonna go up to a typical 84 to 86 degrees. This is one of the reasons why they took the thermometer function uh, away from the user on the solar version. Uh, which is, I think was silly because they said, well, it's on your wrist. It's always going to say the same temperature. Well, all you got to do is take it off your wrist for 10 or 15 minutes. It won't give you immediate temperature, but if you're camping, you want to know what the outside temperature is or in your tent or something, it's very useful. Just take your watch off for a few minutes and, and, and it's perfect. So I really, uh, I really enjoy that. And as you can tell, the temperature stays there when it goes back to time. So that's a really cool feature of this watch that you always have the time while you do other features. Of course, the G-Shocks and some of the other watches do that as well. And it's a really nice feature on that. Um, 
Let's show the other one. So let's get it back on there. And then it goes back to the last section that you were using, so you're back on the thermometer. Uh, over here on the eight o'clock position, we have uh, the alarm and it says that it's off. Really easy to turn that on again while you're wearing the watch. As you can tell, I'm doing all this wearing the watch. Um, so then we have the two different alarms. There's the compass again with the degrees. And then all you do, if that's north, you could just turn the bezel, unidirectional bezel. It's not a dive watch. So let's say north is there, make it stable. And then you want to go uh, east right here. So once you set the north to here, this is the bearing that you're going to be going. So you turn around and, and end up going in this direction. And then if you know the degrees, the bearing, 340 degrees, whatever, then you could just head in that direction and set this accordingly. All right, let's put this back to the top. Now the bezel isn't very clicky, it has a minor click, and that's on purpose, I believe. Everything they do is on purpose. Don't think they make mistakes very often. They don't. I, I find that again and again on these Tissot watches. Um, anyway, it's really easy to turn. And... Let me see if I can get the sound. So it has a clicky, it's not too, it feels, it's not quite mushy, it's clicky, it's just that the spring is so, uh, not so strong on purpose, because there's not a lot of grabbing surface on here, just a tiny bit where it hangs over the edge. It's easy to turn, but if it was any more uh, tense in there, then it would be difficult to turn. So they knew what they were, uh, knew what they were doing on that, on the bezel. <clears throat> let's take the watch off go through the features and the rest of the, the items on here so let's hit this again here we have the chronograph again it's still running as you can see so you can just leave that running even if you're not on it and then you can go back to it that's really nice stop it reset so easy even when you're wearing it there's the altitude so now it says 174 it's stabilizing one sets 167 so it's getting right back to where it was as you can see, the watch isn't changing, just we have um, a varying change in the barometric pressure, and we're gonna look at that right now. Let's put the T-Touch back on. We're gonna go over to the barometric pressure. Not only does it have the pressure that you can read, but it remembers it over time and gives you trends. So, right, and what it does is the trend barometer setting on the hands, which is separate from here, for display purposes, is from 10 to two, it is going to show you whether you got improving or declining weather, if rain or a storm's coming, or whether a nice uh, warm front's coming in with blue skies and high sun and so forth. <clears throat> All right, so let's get that T-Touch going. As you can see, it's past the 12. So from 12 to 2, it means it's improving. And the closer it is to 2, the faster it's improving and the bigger the change. And if it was below 12, it means that rain or bad weather might be coming uh, cold front might be coming in and all the way down to 10 man it's it's happening fast and so that's how so when you go out with this watch you can see trends in weather if you're in the mountains whether a storm is coming so this watch is going to tell your temperature whether a storm is coming um, uh, what altitude you're at the alarm so you can use it for so many things in your life just wearing this on your wrist and i like to have that in addition to my phone in case something happens to my phone you're running out of batteries you don't want to be using a lot of stuff on your phone if you're running out of batteries on your phone and you're somewhere where you can't get to a recharge let's set this back to the main screen so there's also other screens involved besides those three that we just saw i mean those uh, six features that are on the touch screen in addition what we have is uh, features in the center. So if you touch the center, you're gonna go through features. And what this one right here is, this is the second time zone. I have it, actually this is the current time zone. So if you wanna see the seconds, there it is right there. You can see it's counting. Now watch what happens when it's 60, watch the minute hand. See it move? That minute hand moves three times a minute every 20 seconds. So even without this showing, um, it's so precise that you can see it's just hitting right on the, on the minute marker. That's another thing, you don't have to worry about it not hitting the markers. When it hits 20, you're gonna see it jump again. There it is now, it's one third into that minute. Two minutes and, and a third. And then on 40 seconds, it's gonna go again. And then when it hits zero, it'll be exactly on 12, three. How precise is that? You don't see that on a lot of watches. That is just exceptional. Every attention to detail, they've done a really good job. All right, let's see what other functions are in the center. 
again. Right now we have the second time zone. I use UTC, I'm a ham radio operator and everything we do is UTC um, or universal time. And uh, the same thing with police, fire, services like that, that 24 hours they're on duty and they're gonna use UTC if they're gonna go across time zones. Uh, so that's very useful for me as well. You hit the center again, I timed it out. So we're gonna touch that again. It does that to save battery power and stuff. All right, now we got the options. You go through the options. That's where you set things like meter versus uh, fee on the altimeter and Celsius versus Fahrenheit on the temperature and so forth. So you can go through all those things. Um, let's keep going here. So time zones, and then you go through the options. Uh, also, this has a backlit LCD. So easy. that's the other thing is legible day or night. Look how legible that time is, which is one of my requirements on a watch. And also, how is it at night? Well, it's got incredible loom. I'm gonna do it now before I forget. I sometimes forget that. And then I gotta put a, oops. Then we gotta put a uh, picture in it. All right, let's see here. That might be enough light. I don't wanna blind you. Just one, two, three, four, five seconds. And we got a really good loom. The hands last all night. There's a little bit more uh, on the hands than on the indices, like a lot of watches. Um, so it lasts all through the night. Gorgeous green. There's, there's no pip on the on this here, but it's just not really needed. It's not a dive watch. Also what this watch has is um, backlit LCD. You hold it for three seconds, and then you're gonna get that. Isn't that gorgeous? And at night, man, that really glows a really beautiful red. And even if you're in UTC time, for instance, you're going to see that instead. So touch this. We want to see our, U our UTC time. We can go there. Oop, oh, went too far. There we go. Uh, and then you push the button and you're going to get that, that backlit. The other thing is you can go through at night and go through the functions and it doesn't shut off. A lot of watches like my G-Shocks, when you try to change the function, the light goes off, the backlit. This one doesn't do that. Again, well thought out, it, really cool. You gotta love that. All right, let's continue with the, um, the ergonomics and the features and the design elements of the watch. I don't wanna make this too long, so we'll keep it moving here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we have a very comfortable titanium bracelet. This bracelet has uh, links that are easy to change. They are not screws, they are push pins, but there's no collars you have to worry about, those little miniature tiny little barrel things that you can lose. It just has a split um, pin at one end and that keeps the friction, keeps it from backing out, which I've never had a problem with. As I said, the clasp is easy to use and it's milled. It's really nice to see. And you got some writing on there, if we could focus in on it right there, titanium and it has a reference number. We have a signed, um, Deployment class there with the, with the T cell T. And there we see the um, bracelet moving around. There are only two micro adjustments. I wish there were more, but I've been wearing this out. Even my wrists are swelling up, and no uh, issues with it being too tight or too loose. This just hits the sweet spot for me. You know how some straps, those holes, are tweeners. I call them. Um, one section on the strap, it's either too tight or too loose, and it just isn't that magic place where you can move the holes one over and, and go from when your wrists are bigger or smaller, walking around and stuff. Um, and so, some watches are just unlucky enough where you, you can't find a comfortable spot. This one is not like that for me. Um, as you can see from the sides, it's a rather thick case, sort of like a barrel shape, beautiful polishing. Seems better with the lights off. Let me see if I can put one of the lights on here. Try this one here. I just want the watch to look good here. Let's see. That's a little bit better. Might as well turn this one back on. I don't want it to be too dark. Yeah, so it has uh, the really nice uh, barrel shape on the side. Sorry about that. It's a very shiny watch, so I'm just trying to find a comfortable spot. Um, yeah, just uh, easy to use push buttons. As I mentioned, the back has all those holes in it. 
It, it only needed one hole because it has to get to that sensor. The sensor is under there for the barometric pressure and the thermometer and so forth. It has to get into the the inner part of the movement through sensors and uh, that's a protection. So it's a little bit thicker because of that. There's a airspace between there. They didn't need all those holes, but they did it on purpose just for uh, looking really nice, but also to lighten the watch. And that's what makes this watch so light. There's no extra metal that doesn't uh, need to be there. So the bracelet's good. Now, as far as changing the strap, something that is unusual, you would think those holes in the lugs here are for quick strap changes. It's not the case. What that is, is that is necessary to change the pin. There are no spring bars uh, for the straps or bracelets on this watch. If you look right there uh, where it connects, if we can see that, let's take a look here. As you can see, there's no spring bars. How the heck do you change that? Well, what it is, is there's one, just like the bracelet, that is one pin that goes all the way through. So the way you change the bracelet is you would take a pin drive, some kind of tool like your spring bar tool, put it there and you need to whack it at the other end with a hammer. And I'm not kidding. Boom, boom, boom. There's a guy on YouTube that wants to change these straps all the time. Go, oh, easy to change. He takes these banging up with a hammer, even right down to here. Uh, no thanks. Uh, the reason they're doing that, they, it's not like they're trying to make this hard for us. There's a very good reason for that is when they were designing this watch and they were using spring bars, they couldn't find spring bars anywhere that didn't affect the compass. There's some magnetism, whether in the springs or the spring bar pins or whatever it was, that compass was going to here instead of true north. And that was a big issue. So they found pins. I don't know what they're made out of. I don't know if they're titanium or what they're made out of, but they're non-magnetic. And that's the reason for no spring bars. And so I, I would say this is not a strap monster that you can change straps all the time because it's a pain. I'm not doing it again. If I had to, I would. I changed out a strap on my other uh, T-Touch, my solar version of this watch, uh, which is right here. If you think this one's big at 43 and everything, this is a 45. This is a big watch. Gotta have a big wrist to carry this one. It is a little bit thinner, uh, but this one works the same way. There's We got the holes on the uh, end here. Let's see if you can see that. We got the, there it is. And same thing, you gotta pound that all the way through. And I did that to get this green strap on there. Uh, anyway, so that's that's the reason for no spring bars on these watches. It's a, it's kind of a pain, but if you're not gonna change them all the time, it's a non-issue and it makes it more robust. There's no spring to break in here. The spring bar is not coming out. It's not going anywhere very strong. So it makes it extremely rugged. You don't have to worry about uh, losing that. This is a perpetual calendar in here. So once you set the date and time, it's gonna know your leap years and that sort of thing. And you can set it for the daylight uh, saving time. Um, like I said, there's a satin version of this watch. It doesn't scratch as easily as this one, but I just love this one. I think I think the reason why is that uh, shiny metal reminds me of chrome and it fits in with that racing motif. So if you notice that carbon fiber background, uh, that's kind of uh, reminiscent of the checkered flag in racing. And the italic, um, the Arabic italic numerals uh, make it look a lot like a, a gauge on an automobile. <clears throat> Very consistent with their theme. Same thing with the splash of red, like red lining. This is where the red lining would be on an engine tachometer. And then you've got the little um, fine, uh, I wonder if I shut this off, you can, if we can see the, um, if we can see that better on the, I think we can. There you go. <clears throat> Actually, that's a lot, that's a lot better. Let's try that for a little while. Um, anyway, you can see now this is the way the watch looks in normal viewing. If you're just wearing the watch, you can't really see the scratches and it's it's just gorgeous. This is the way it normally looks. So I'm gonna leave it like this for a while. Uh, but now you can see, see the fine, beautiful black. This is why I fell in love with this watch at the jewelry store. I saw it just like this. Isn't that great? just gorgeous anyway those racing cues I think this kind of looks like chrome like a car and it makes it very racing inspired so that's one of the things I fell in love with it as why as, as much too um, I'm going through my notes to see if there's anything I miss sometimes I miss things there's so much to this watch that um, <laughs> trying to remember all this is uh, is quite a challenge um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything here please bear with me you can take a look at this gorgeous watch while I'm doing that 
And then we'll take a look at the back. You see those holes better now. It's got that laser engravement on everything. Here's the 1853 since they've been around since then and Sapphire Crystal. Um, I think that's about it. It has a two year warranty. It's all Swiss made. Uh, you see at the bottom here, uh, Swiss made right there. Um, it has a sapphire crystal, as mentioned, and that is anti-reflective coated. So it has an AR coating on it. So it's viewable at most angles. And so is that LCD. Look at that. You can still read it from all different angles, unlike a lot of them. Because they're, they're going to be using STN technology, uh, I know, on their reverse. On this one, I don't know if it's the same technology, but it is really good. And the contrast is exceptional. Right there, you can see you can see it looks like liquid ink. It is so finely made that those digits are very separate from the gray background. All right, let's go through the pros and the cons of this uh, watch. Well, the pros are just evident on everything I just said. It's easy to read. It's lightweight. Um, so much functionality to it um, that it's uh, it's a good value proposition even though it's these are coming in an eleven hundred dollar range um, to get a Swiss made sapphire crystal uh, all the functions that you're gonna get in this watch all titanium titanium bracelet polishing costs more this is gonna be more expensive than the satin version the features, the ease of use, the ergonomics, the comfort, legibility, 100 meter water resistance, I think all those things are easily put into the pro. Um, the only cons are gonna be maybe cost, if you're used to buying four or five, 6,000 and up Swiss watches, then the cost is actually gonna be a pro at that price range. Um, if you're used to buying three, four, 500 hour watches, then the cost might be a con for you and say, well, I, I just can't warranty that, uh, justify that money. Um, but for what you're getting, it's uh, I think it's a bargain at that price. Uh, scratches in the polished version might be a con. It is going to get scratched. That's what it is. If you don't like the scratches, then um, the satin version would probably be would probably be much better. Well, oh, the reference number. Let me quickly give the reference. I'll put it in the show notes as well. Uh, but Tissot is not shy about using a bunch of numbers. <laughs> which is I, I don't they don't have that many watches like trillions of watches that they have a have to have numbers that long but uh, I'm not going to argue that point with Tiso maybe I'll give them a call uh, just kidding here it is T Tango 047442700 and that's the that's the reference uh, number on it and of course, you, the straps, you can get straps, rubber straps, or whatever you want to get to. But it is 21 millimeters. You're going to have less options than 20 or 22. And that would be a con as well, the 21 millimeter. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you got a cup of coffee or something. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I have to buy all these myself, these watches. And, and I have a bunch more to do, but eventually I'll run out. So I really appreciate any uh, subscription, likes, and hit that little bell notification. And we'll catch you again here on Wristwatch Obsession. Take care.